Hey guys and gals, welcome back to another Tip Tuesday. It's Evan and Chuck again, and we're going to show you another tip on Tuesday. Cool. So today we're going to be going over something that Evan actually got a request from a customer this past couple of weeks. Um, what they wanted to do was to update their frequency and the interval of which their calibration scheduling happens. And the classic way of doing that is going into your global equipment change and you can change it up there and you can select all your equipment. That's all good and well, but it actually won't update your next due date if you do that. It'll change the frequency and the interval, but it will actually keep the due date the same. So in the scenario where you wanna actually change your due date, you're gonna to have to do what we're doing today, which is creating a special event to do this. Now this event, you can run it on specific gauges, you can run it on an entire company gauges, and it all comes down to what you choose in the choose equipment screen. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we have that checked. And then the event information screen is going to be how we set what the interval and the frequency is going to be. So we wanna have those two at least checked. Uh, there's no reason to have it as a calibration event, so you can leave that unchecked. And then the rest of these are also uh, extraneous, so you will need them. Uh, in our situation, we have frequency update as the name of our equipment. It's a good name. Um, yep, that's a pretty descriptive name. Name it whatever you want. The next thing we need to do is make sure we have user defined one and user defined two activated. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. I already had them set up before the video. But just to show you, just check these boxes. You're going to want to name the first one frequency. Okay, and then we are going to do interval next. And if you're using the fields, you're going to want to make sure that you have them on a specific order, of course. And if you're in the layout, you're going to want to add them to your layout. So once that's done, uh, we now have to go to schedule updates. Again, I've already had this created, but I'll walk you through the process of doing that. So we create a new one, and the first thing we want to do is pick our schedule type. You can do it for any schedule type you want, but calibration is the most common schedule type by far, and it's the one that our client wanted in the example we provided earlier, so we're going to stick with that. The only other thing we need to change is the schedule update right here. This is very important. There's a lot of options to choose from, but there's really only three that you would use. Um, set frequency and interval from user one and user two, that goes without a given. The way we're setting it up um, and the reason we need the event information tab is because we wanna be able to type in exactly what we want. So this is what will actually pull in the user one and the user two to calculate this. If you choose without calculating the schedule, it's just like the global quick change. It'll change your interval, it'll change the frequency, but it won't actually affect the due date for any of your gauges that this is applied to. If you choose to calculate it based on the event date, what that really means is it's based off when you run this event. Not the last event that was performed on that gauge, but whenever this event gets run. So if you run this in January and you set it to 12 months, it'll push it till next January. The one that we want in our example is going to be schedule, the last schedule date, I'm sorry. That sounds pretty important. This is very important. So if you, for example, just off the top of my head, choose to calculate it based on the event date and then choose an entire company worth of gauges and then run this, you will affect the due date on an entire company's worth of gauges, which is something that could take a very long time to undo. Can it be undone though? It can be undone, and the amount of time it takes to get undone can be greatly, greatly reduced if you have a nifty friend like me, Chuck. Well, thankfully I have a nifty friend named Chuck. Yeah, if you didn't catch on, this is precisely what Evan did. But, nonetheless, no harm, no foul. He learned the lesson, and now he's here to teach you a tip about it. And spend a Saturday fixing the problem. <laughs> so we're going to choose Calculate from the last schedule date. This is important because it will use the last calibration on that gauge rather than the event that we're setting up right now. So once that's set up, I believe we're done. We can save the event. And then as always, reload your settings whenever you make a config change. Okay. And then we will run the event. Right now, our gauge has a calibration schedule of 18 months. It was performed last June and it is due next December. We want to update that, we want to change it, 
let's set it back to 12 months. Let's say we're going to update uh, how frequently we're going to be calibrating things. Maybe some new standard is being in place. Um, whatever your reasons, this event will help you accomplish your goals. So what I would have suggested Evan do in his situation was test it first on one gauge. Um, you can choose any number of gauges like we said before in this. You can choose a whole company if you wanted to. You can choose every gauge in your system if you wanted to. But to keep things simple for the video, we'll just run it on one so you can see the effect. It's highly recommended just to test around first before um, you do it to anything, a serious, uh, you know, across the, you know, the software um, changes. Yeah. You know, test one gauge or maybe just a, a test company if you have before you just go and do it for an entire company and do it for two or three hundred pieces of uh, equipment. And that goes for everything, not just setting up events like this. Yeah. So our frequency, we want 12 months. We're going to up that from 18 to 12, and the interval will be months. And Evan mentioned that this is an important distinction. If you just type month, it won't accept it. You have to use months. It's very picky about what it wants. You can also choose days or years. You're going to make sure that those are in the plural. Okay. So everything looks good here. Let's go ahead and finish. Yes, we would like to mark it as complete. And there we go. Just like that, we have changed our frequency and the interval, and it actually updated the due date. Now I've got some logic in there that skips weekends, so that's why you see it a couple of days before it would actually be due. Very cool. I wish I had watched this video prior to me doing it for a customer of ours and how to learn the hard way. So hopefully this will save you guys some time and um, some frustration and possibly getting scared a little bit that you just made a very serious mistake. Um, but we're always here to help. So please give us a call if you guys ever have any questions or concerns. Awesome. And I think that'll do it for us today. So until next Tuesday, happy calibrating. We'll see you.